it's got like an autumn feel to it today. Oh, he's done fingers to me. Take a look at that. That looks amazing. Good to meet you, yes, I'm not Rick Kane. I'm not Rick Kane, BTS, good morning. Good morning, out of the morning, with five. I'm not Rick Kane, BTS, or indeed out of the morning, with five. Many thanks, have a good morning. And here comes the rain. So we're going approximately 11 miles northeast of Sark. Richard, what are we doing today? Oh, another day in paradise, eh? Hey? Well, lovely morning, nice to be up, so bright and cheery. Watch the sun come up, you know. Look at the Dewana. And she's a uh, 98 foot. She was a private yacht, built in about 1928. Um, and she was lost in a hurricane, 4th of August, in about 1946, thereabouts. Uh, lovely story. And, uh, so, you lot are going to have a look at it. Uh, no, it got smashed up by a trawler a few years ago. Hopefully, if that thing in the sky gets a bit brighter, you might be able to see something down there. What depth is it? About 50 metres. So, it's a, an airtight dive. And what, the, uh, do and what was the tide like around it? Terrible. <laughs> tide never stops. But it's a nice deep tide. And uh, as you can see here, looking out the window, it's, you know, it's that calm out there. Just a, just a light spray. So, uh, yeah, it's one of those awkward diving places. But uh, it's very difficult to uh, shot the wreck because it's so small. Uh, and it bits. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting dive. But once a year, special occasion. One of the only two places where sharks have been filmed menacingly underwater. Yeah, well, I look forward late, to that. By the late great Percy Tipper. Yeah. yeah. And that was a cracking bit of footage. Did he sell it to the BBC? He did. It was the only uh, bit of um, footage of a poor beagle in its natural yeah. habitat. And yeah. it looked mean and it looked nasty. And it was swimming fast around in circles. Yeah. <laughs> we do believe that adrenaline is real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fingers crossed we don't see any of that today. No, I want to see one. I don't. Oh, yeah. Well, a 200 pounder, not a 350 pounder. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it goes. Well, that sun is starting to break through now. Only shines on the righteous. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's not, I thought it's, it was it's, taking a photo. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you, that would have made a lovely photo with us on in the background. Not ready yet. Yeah. Is that the wreck there? Yeah. Yeah. You can start getting ready. Get ready, man. Wait till I tell you. Okay. Okay.
Duana, 140 gross tons, built in Krakowiva, Yugoslavia, and was delivered on July 1937. The vessel we're about to dive is actually the second Joanna. The first Joanna started his life as the Myra. It was built for Desmond Bill Brown, a retired British Brigadier General. He owned this vessel for only three years before he sold it to one of his British officer friends, Colonel David Vandenberg. Vandenberg changed the name of this vessel, the Myra, to the Duana. And after deciding to build a larger Duana, used all the pieces of this vessel to make the second Duana. The one we're diving today. And believe it or not, the hull of the Mira is still sailing today as a pirate ship in Croatia called the Corsaro. The wreck. So the wreck is here, and these that line is but there are bubbles coming up from the wreck. So hopefully they're in the right spot. Yeah, we're just waiting for the rest of the team to prepare their bodies. As this is the first time I've dived this wreck, there's always a little bit of um, butterflies in the stomach when you're going down to one of these wrecks. Especially this one where no one ever really talks fondly of it. It tends to be always dark and very, very tidal. So there's a bit of apprehension when I get down to the shipwreck. down onto the wreck. Let's put some meat on the bones of this story. See what we can find out about her. The Guernsey Evening Press, Monday, August the 9th, 1948. Yacht disaster off the island. Furious gale takes heavy toll of lives. New lost added to Guernsey lifeboat history. Air search for survivors. One of the fiercest gales that Guernsey has experienced for a long while struck the island with a savage fury on Saturday night, leaving in its wake a trail of havoc and tragedy. It brought disaster to the yacht Duana, which foundered and from which there was but one survivor. When they landed at the town slipway, the crew of the Queen Victoria had with them the sole survivor from the tragic yacht Duana. 54-year-old Dutchman and navigator Nicholas Wieselman who had been picked up by the lifeboat near the Plat Fougere at about 5.30am yesterday, after he had been exposed to the high seas and gale winds for something near six hours. Wearing a life belt, he was in a state of complete exhaustion and suffering from shock. Wieselman was immediately taken to the emergency hospital by a St John AB ambulance and attended by a doctor, who found he was suffering from shock and exposure, but had no broken bones. From what the survivor has told us of the tragedy, it appears about one o'clock on Sunday morning the skipper and crew of the Duana decided to abandon the ship and took to their dinghy. They were in the dinghy when she was swamped and they were all flung into the water. That was the last the survivor saw of his colleagues. At 9.50 on Saturday evening, the hundreds of people assembled on the jetty to witness the departure of the mailboats were startled by the detonation of rockets from the lifeboat shed. They were fired in response to the distress signals seen in the vicinity of Plat Fougere. These came from the Ketch rigged auxiliary yacht Duana, which earlier on had been riding at anchor in the roadstead, not far from the Trinity House yacht Patricia. She had been offered a berth in St Sampson's Harbour by the authorities, but had refused it. At 8.30 she was seen to be proceeding up the Little Russell, and it was then she was off a Bordeaux when her signals were observed. The Duana had arrived from Cherbourg and was bound for South Africa. In a short time, the lifeboat crew had assembled under the command of Coxswain 
F. Zabala. Now we have a summary of what's happened so far. As you can see, this side of the ship is actually missing. Sadly, a few years ago, uh, during the first lockdown of COVID, we believe a fishing boat trawled through this shipwreck. It's basically peeled the deck off and left it to the northeast. As I pan back around now, I'm looking into the engine room. One of the engines, this is a twin engine vessel, a twin screw. Some nice beastie congas in here and a massive squat lobster. Just poking my head through, you can see one of the engines here to the right hand side. And a bit earlier on we seen the propeller with a spider crab sitting on it. Now I'm going to swim across to the piece of deck that's been peeled away. So I would be in the centre of the ship at the moment. And you can see the ribs have just been peeled away to my left. At time of the loss, the owner of this vessel was Mrs. Maria Schmid van der Burr, age 41, Yugoslavian by birth but Dutch. Address Halden Manor Hotel, Higher Terrace, Torquay, Devon. The ship was registered in Southampton, and contained the owner and four crew. This is where I noticed the whole seabed is made up of small shells. As soon as I put my knees into it, I sunk into the surface. This is the underside of the deck. If we take a little look underneath, we'll see the wheelhouse now completely flattened. During 1940 to 1945, she was made a HD PCV Harbour Defence Patrol Craft and by this time had been converted from a sailing ship to an oil driven motor cruiser. very close to being almost pitch black down here. I think we'll keep the lights on. Here we can see one of the large rectangular lights. I'm not sure if this was one that was added by the Navy when it was requisitioned or this is one of the original ones. Glass is still in one piece, that surprises me thinking it's been knocked over. There's the black sheep of the family there. To give you a sense of what's happened, you can see the side of the ship's been just flipped over like this. So the trawler must have been heading in a northerly direction when it pulled it off. And here you can see where it's twisted, its pivot point was uh, up the bow area. So there is stuff in the sand here or in the gravel, not quite sure what it is. It's a nice shanker there. Likewise, this could have been a winch for the anchors, I'm not sure. At this depth of 48 metres, you don't really get enough time to really study it. So what happened to the rest of the crew? We know the navigator, or the captain, was saved. The remaining crew was Steward, George Wiltshire, age 37, Torquay. Engineer, Walter Noble, age 38, Belfast. Crew, George Self, age 35, family living in Dartmouth. Friday evening, 3rd of September, 1948 at Picarel Bay near Poulier, St. Sampson's. Chief Officer Moore had told the coroner that there was no one on island to identify the body. 
I have no doubt, he said, that the body is from the yacht Duana. He explained that he had photographs taken of the tattoo marks on the body and would use them for identification. Friday 17th of September 1948 The body of a man which was found at Pickerel Bay in St Sampson's on the evening of the 3rd of September 1948 was identified as George Wiltshire, steward of the yacht Duana, which founded off the north coast of Guernsey on the night of the 7th of August 1948. The coroner, Mr H.G. Casey, recorded a verdict of misadventure. The chief officer of police, Mr A.P. Lammy, said the inquiry opened on September the 4th, since when inquiries had been made in Cornwall and Hampshire, his wife and Mr Nicholas Wieselman, who survived the disaster, had seen the photographs of the tattoo marks on the dead man's body and from these markings identified the body as George Wiltshire. Five days after the disaster, the body of mate, 35-year-old Mr George Self, was washed ashore between Grand Rock and Grand Havre. Mr George Self was a member of the Royal Antediluvian Order of the Buffaloes. He can see his body being taken to the full-on cemetery for burial, with full honours. Even 10 years after the disaster happened, his daughter, Mrs. Anne Heathkiff, laid a wreath on her father's grave. Today, the headstone's been updated, and now his wife joins him in the same grave. And what I think could be one of his sons, Mark. What I found interesting was an interview that Mr Wieselman done with the Guernsey Press. He basically said he, there was a salvage wish uh, and however, if I can find the necessary financial backing somewhere in England, I want to go with a salvage party to seek the lost Duana, which was a beautiful ship and valued at something near £20,000. I have had some experience of diving and I would like to have a go at saving the yacht. It was Madame's wish and this was the name that he gave uh, Miss Van der Broek, uh, that if we lost a ship and any of us survived, the Duana should be salvaged and sold. The proceeds could then have been divided so that each of the crew's wife and children could, say, have um, a thousand pound or 500 pound for each child. The Guernsey Press representative said he pointed out to Nicholas that even the dying words of a wealthy Mr. Van den Broek would not hold good in a court of law, as her wishes should have been put down on paper. He replied that this was impossible at the time of the tragedy, adding that I am hoping that if the relatives of Madame can be found, they will see that these widows and children of the crew don't go without. Also, quite a sad footnote really is Mr Wieselman explained that Mrs Vandenbroek was a very brave woman. When I last saw her, she was being taken out to sea, clutching some prized possessions and her two Pekingese dogs to which she was devoted. They'd been dead for some time in her arms, but she just wouldn't let go of them. Madame was the last of the four on board whom I seen alive. As the end was approaching, I urged her to lighten her weight in the water by abandoning some of her valuables she had tried rescuing from the dinghy. Last thing she threw away were the ship's papers and her jewellery, which was in a box, valued at about £7,000. So how did you like that dive? A bit different. Every shipwreck is different, it's got a different life, a different use, um, and this one was a private yacht. I've missed out loads of history on it, well, we haven't had time, so I'll have to dive that shipwreck again and bring you the rest of the history. If you like that, don't be shy, put a thumbs up, and I'll catch you on the next tide.